that apparently we are being live streamed, so if you haven't done your hair like me, um, now's the time to have a quick brush. Um, I'm Marcus Reeves, and I'm chair of the Institute Fundraising, although not for much longer. Uh, I offered to do a Vladimir Putin, but for some odd reason the board wasn't up for it, some old-fashioned idea around democracy and good governance was mentioned, I, but I did hear muttered in corridor or something around already too big for his boots. But anyway, um, back soon to the day job as director of fundraising at the British Red Cross, saving lives by inspiring people to give and to give again. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the 2014 convention, the only fundraising conference for fundraisers across the UK and around the world, designed by fundraisers for fundraisers. Let me say that again for a moment. There are volunteers who in their day jobs raise swillions and give hour upon hour to make this conference the best in the world. I've been to conferences in Europe and the USA. This one knocks them for six because UK fundraising rocks by its far the best in the world. In the next three days, there will be over 120 sessions to suit every fundraiser's needs and desires. Get ready for ideas to make you pop and for knowledge to take home and apply to your great causes. Take every opportunity to learn from the guys at the front and from those around you, and I know you'll have a fantastic convention. You may well learn more from the person sitting behind you than you do from those on the stage. So turn around, shake hands with the person behind you and say hi. <laughs> to them for putting on such a brilliant programme led by Liz, uh, and I think they deserve a huge round of applause. good for people's health and welfare, and good for us 
as a nation. It's what puts the great into Great Britain. It's what the big society is all about. At least that's what most of us thought. But today, if you read some sections of the media, now we are fifth colonists, hell-bent on undermining the state, grasping resources for our own benefit, obstructing shoppers, and campaigning not to change the world, but to advance our own self-interest. Never before have we faced such hostility. First of all, people working in our great sector know how important it is to be upfront and transparent about where the money we sweat and toil for and raises goes. That's why I'm glad the NCBO set up the commission to look at executive pay and the institute worked closely with it over the past few months to ensure the donor's voice would be at the same too. Yes, donors care what happens with their donations and won't tie anyone that suggests otherwise. But the debate has been so one-sided, so unfair. Let me give you an example. The CEO of Oxfam is paid about £120,000 a year, is responsible for £360 million budget, has 700 shops in the UK, 5,000 employees, 20,000 volunteers, and works in over 90 often dangerous countries. £120,000 doesn't necessarily feel like a lot in the context of that job description, especially when you compare it to the CEO of Next, who also runs 700 shops, no humanitarian aid, and gets £1.5 million. The head teacher of my local academy gets more than the head teacher of my local academy gets more than me. She has 70 staff, eight million pounds in income, while I have 900 staff, 12,000 volunteers, 340 shops, and around 150 million pounds in income. She does an amazing job teaching the kids of Hackney. I could not do her job, nor could she do mine. Money is not going to make me a much better fundraiser, and nor do I need bonuses to get me out to go to work. But, I do, but we do need fairness in the debate, and not lynch mobs in the media or parliament. We live in our worth. We are not the bankers or brokers who bankrupted our nation and turned so many to queuing at the food bank. So give us a break, please. I guess in the next 12 months, you will all know what your directors of fundraising get paid. We can all judge their worth in our annual reports. And of course, you can tell your bosses if you're underpaid compared to your colleagues in a similar cause raising less. <laughs> Unintended consequences of transparency. And as an old shop steward, the perfect way to close differentials and with external benchmarking for all. Hey ho, life can be a bit odd sometimes. The public's view of the sector is easily influenced and worryingly. People are being told, even by government ministers, no less, that charities represent an antagonistic presence in our high school. <coughs> Just last week, Brandon Lewis MP, the minister responsible for the high street, used a press release to say, and I quote, risk turning our high street into an unwelcome gauntlet of bolshy bucket shakers and clipboard waving conniving. Well, Mr. Lewis, that is an outrageous slur on our sector's volunteers and fundraisers alike. Just six weeks ago, Red Cross volunteers gave 40,000 hours of their time shaking buckets on the streets of the UK during Red Cross Week trying to make a difference. I challenge Mr. Lewis to come out on the high street with me, dressed as a Red Cross nurse or other, some other fancy, <laughs> fancy dress, and see if Bolshe ever raises a bean. I personally will donate 500 quid to his favourite charity in Great Yarmouth if he takes me up on the challenge and says sorry to us all. He was a great advocate for charity shops in the recent past. Now, Mr Lewis, be a little bit kinder to fundraisers, please. So at this time, it's perhaps even more important for everyone to get behind the Institute proud to be a fundraiser campaign and show the difference we are proud to make in making the world a better place. Just before I hand over to the main event this morning, I'd like to thank you all for the support you've given me during my time as chair. It's been a privilege to serve you, and I hope you can all now stop voting for me in civil society's poll of the most influential. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, it's really rather embarrassing, and friends and family great, take great pleasure in taking the piss out. <laughs> so from now on, vote for Richard Taylor so we can all rig him as much as you all do me.
I hope you have a fantastic convention. I hope that at all times you take pride in your fundraising and the amazing gift of giving you make happen for our <coughs> wonderful causes. And here, to formally launch our convention and our proud to be a fundraiser campaign, I'm delighted to welcome the wonderful Alan Clayton and Jane George.